verses 22 through 25. That's Psalm chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. And then verses 22 through 25. In your spare time, please read that. It'll be a blessing to you if you read that whole song. Psalm number 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and I'm not silent, but you are holy. Enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. Verses 22 through 25. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you offsprings of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the afflictions of the afflicted. Nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard, My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. Eternal God, our fathers, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. Lord, we just say thank you. Lord, we glorify you. We lift you. God, we praise you. We magnify you. For Lord, you are good and you are God. God, some of us come as the psalmist today. And the psalmist has asked the question, Lord, and many of us ask this question today. My God, my God, why have you forsaken us? My God, my God, why have you not heard us? My God, my God, we are crying unto you as our previous parents have cried unto you. But today we conclude, Lord, just as they have trusted you, just as they cried unto you, we will cry unto you. Just, Lord, as they cried unto you and you heard them, we believe this morning, Lord, that you hear us and that you will tend to our prayers. Lord, we conclude this morning, Father God, that as we declare your name before other men, before other saints, we, we know that you hear us and we thank you, Lord. Lord, we've come to the same conclusion as the psalmist this morning. We will declare your praises even before men, those who fear you. We will declare your praises in the sanctuary, Lord. We will declare your praises, Father God, for we realize that you have not despised us. You have not afflicted us. And we know, Father God, we need to praise you. We need to honor you in all our conditions. In all our situations, we come today as the psalmist, Lord, and we say we will praise you. And we come to magnify in you in the assembly of God. We come to magnify you in the presence of all men. Lord, we realize that you are holy and we are unholy. We realize, Father God, that we have fallen short and you never missed a beat. Now, Lord, we come lifting you this morning as we come into the assembly of God. God, you are worthy. Regardless of what goes on around us, Lord, you are worthy. And for that, we thank you. God, we thank you 
Father God, you know that you are forgiving God. And you are able to forgive us even in the midst of our mistakes, Lord. We ask you now to forgive us. In the midst of falsely accusing you, God, we ask you to forgive us. In the midst of being upset, Father God, we ask you to forgive us. And Lord, we ask you to bless us to put on our praise. Bless us to lift up our voices to you. Bless us to clap our hands unto you. Bless us to glorify you, Father, for you are good and you are God. Bless us, Father God, to always recognize you as the great I am, the God who does great things. And we come today to glorify you and to elevate you and let men know that you're the God who does great things. Bless us in this service today. Bless us to be about your will today. Bless us, Father God, that we will rein in all our scattering thoughts and our wondering minds. Lord, bless us to focus on you, aim our prayer to you, and bless your holy name. Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to rip and run throughout the service. That he will speak to us, Father God, as only he can. That we will acknowledge him in his presence. And that you, Father God, will be magnified. Lord, somebody come today with a weary heart. We ask you to touch in the name of Jesus. Somebody is listening that could not make it. We ask you to touch in the name of Jesus. Somebody, Father God, has fallen short and, and they don't seem to be worthy and they don't think themselves to be worthy. But God, we know that Jesus has made us worthy. And for that we just lift our hands. For that we clap our hands. For, for that we are in you and we praise you for just who you are. Now we ask you, Father God, to take control. Bless us to praise you as only we can. And praise you who, who only we should praise, and that you will receive the glory, all the honor and all the praise. It's in the strong, mighty, matchless name of Jesus and Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen. Thank God.
this man is calling Elijah. Yeah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, uh -huh. filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reef uh -huh. and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come and save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yelled and yield up his spirit. I want to talk about Jesus saying from the cross. The All right. All right. Jesus sayings from the cross. Part one. In order for this to be part one, we must understand that there are three sayings before we get to this particular saying. As you look at the seven last sayings of Jesus, many different interpreters organize those sayings differently. Just for this particular lesson, I have chosen to organize it now. When we look at Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 34, in your spare time, you will find Jesus is dying on the cross. And he stopped dying long enough to look at those around him. And he begins to talk to his father. He says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Here it is, Jesus the Christ, a man who has lived a sinless life, yes, setting the stage for how we ought to address other people. Mm -hmm. Not only does he set the stage of how we ought to address other people, but he sets the stage of how we ought to address even our enemies. Yeah. Because when we look at the text mm -hmm. in Luke 23, and you begin at verse 32 and move to verse 34, Dr. Luke declares that when they had come to the place of the skull, mm -hmm. when they had come to the place called Calvary, yes, there they crucified him. King James says that when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and two malefactors, meaning two criminals. King James declares there was one on the right and one on the left. Yes, and when they had come to the place called Calvary, the place of the skull, they brought Jesus there to crucify him. There were two guys that were criminals, one on the right hand, the other one on the left, and they were there because they had done wrong. They were criminals. They were malefactors. They, they were guilty as charged. They deserved to die. But Luke declares that there was a third man there, and that man in the middle was Jesus Christ. All right, all right. The text declares in Luke 23, verses 32 through 34, it says when they had gotten to the place called Calvary, the place of the skull, there they crucified him and the two malefactors. They crucified them on the cross. There were three cross there. They crucified the one in the middle for something that he had not done. Mm -hmm. The message today to you, when you look at that particular saying, you will find out that folk will find you guilty even yeah. when you're innocent. Yeah. And then you find that people will find you guilty even when they know you're innocent. Here is Jesus on the cross. He's, he's dying, getting ready to be put to death on the cross. And Luke says, after they had arrived there, there was a man on the right and a man on the left. And there were criminals all around him that was luring each other and, and supporting each other and encouraging each other to kill an innocent man. This is the death of an innocent man. It is the death of the man in the middle that had done nothing wrong. It was the death of the innocent man. There they crucified Jesus on the cross. They didn't crucify Jesus for doing wrong, but for doing what was right. And they crucified him for your sins and my sins. Had it not been for Jesus on the cross, had it not been for Jesus dying on the cross, had it not been for Jesus that was led up to Calvary, 
We would not be here today. We would not have a connection with God. But because Jesus died on Calvary, a voluntary death, then now we can say we are one with Christ. It was a voluntary death. He volunteered himself because he said to those that were about to crucify him, no man take my life, but I lay it down for my yes, friends. Yes, yes. Jesus lays his life down, and in the midst of him laying down his life, there were people that were coming upon him, beating him. They were, they were spitting on him. They were disrobing him. And guess what he does? He looks at the Father. He looks to the Father. He addresses the Father in his first saying. He says, God forgive them. Father forgive them because they know not what they do. It is a pattern that is set for every Christian. When folk are doing you wrong, when folk are even killing you, can you get to the point where you say, Lord, forgive them? Don't hold it to their charge. The devil has a way of making folk, influencing folk, and getting folk to do things that they normally would not do. He says, God, forgive them. But they know not what they do. And here we are. Upset with folk and won't forgive folk for little bitty things that they've done. We won't forgive them for, I mean, there are friends that have been friends for 20 and 30 years, but because she stood in the doorway in my wedding and act like she was the star of the day, I haven't spoken to her since my wedding. Because she stood in the doorway too long. She knew it wasn't her day. But she act like it was her day. Some guys can't even identify with that. But there are women who haven't spoken in 20 and 30 years because their best friend stood in the doorway too long. And people said the best friend looked really good and she was dressed really good. And therefore the bride hadn't spoken to her in 20 and 30 years. But Jesus died on Calvary. Jesus giving up the ghost on Calvary. Stop dying long enough just to say, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. This particular pericope is an issue of the heart. It says to us that our hearts have to be right with God. As we approach the communion today, as we approach what is known as the Lord's Supper today, we need to understand that our hearts need to be in order. You need to understand that if you drink and are not drinking worldly, meaning that if you drink and have not confessed your sins, if you drink and have not uh, forgiven somebody, if you're still holding somebody hostage in the midst of unforgiveness, then you drink damnation and eat damnation to your soul. That's right. That's right. Paul says in First Corinthians when he deals with the communion, he says that when you eat and you drink and, and do not drink and eat worthily, meaning that you will deserve to drink and eat because you have forgiven your foes. You've forgiven your enemies. Paul says some people have fallen asleep and some of them have got sick. This word sleep in the original Greek means that they are now dead. Is it worth it? Is it really worth it? Is it really worth it to, to hold somebody in bondage? I said to you several times before, when it comes to unforgiveness, it means that you're putting somebody in prison, but the problem is you got to stay there with them and hold the key so they can't get out. All right, all right. Now the question becomes, who's really in prison? Is it you? Or is it them? So it's a hard issue. What's in your heart? How is your heart? How's your heart when it comes to forgiving others of what they have done? Jesus sets the pattern today. He says, search your heart. It's a heart issue. When we look at Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43, in that same chapter, we see the second saying. The second saying that I have chosen is today, you shall be with me in paradise. I told you that when they had led Jesus to, to the place called the skull, the place called Calvary, there they had a conversation. The three on the cross had a conversation. 
It says to us this morning that even when we're at our weakest state, we need to have a conversation with Jesus. We ought to talk with Jesus and we ought to tell Jesus the truth. There was one thief on the left and there was one thief on the right and they both had opposite opposing opinions. One thief said, Jesus, I tell you what, since you say you are the Son of God, why don't you save yourself and save us while you're in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he wasn't looking out for Jesus to save himself. I want to say to you today, sometimes people say things, but they're really not looking out for you. Sometimes people say things and you think that they are complimenting you, but they're really not looking out for you. What they're really doing is shooting you down. This thing said, Jesus, why are you there to save us also? If you are who you are. Next point right there, you need to understand that this is an issue of salvation. It's an issue of salvation because you have a second thief there on the cross. You have this second thief. And he said, man, be quiet. Man, shut up. This man is an innocent man. You know he's innocent. I know he's innocent. They know he's innocent. Stop tripping. Stop being on the bad side. Stop trying to prove yourself. Let down your ego. Stop doing what you're doing and stop saying what you're saying because this is an innocent man. Second thief says, whatever you do, when you get to your kingdom, please remember, remember me. Well, back home, the old saints will catch on fire. When you talk about that, they will really catch on fire. Lord, whatever you do, and whatever you're doing right now, whatever you do, Lord, don't forget about me. One songwriter puts it this way. He said, Lord, when you do what you're doing, while you're doing what you're doing, how you're doing what you did, please remember me. The indication today is it is it is an issue of salvation because you can't come to Jesus without Christ and belief of him. You can't come to God without the trusting of Jesus Christ as your Savior. You can't get to heaven without trusting him as your Savior. When we look at this, when we look at this thief. When we look at this male factor, when we look at this criminal, we ought to see ourselves. You see, we've got to a point in our lives where we have things that are sin, that are big sins that will take you to hell, but there are some sins that we do that won't. I don't do nothing, nothing like that. But don't you understand that every sin we do separates us from God? And since we're separated from God, we need to get to God and God needs to get to us. And the only way for us to get to God and God get to us is that we go through Jesus Christ. Amen. This second thief says, whatever you do, please remember me. Jesus says, this day, today. I will be with you and you will be with me in paradise. Do we look at this thief while he's hanging there? Once he met Jesus, he was never the same. He wasn't watching us live, but he went to paradise. He didn't give his tithes, but he went to paradise. He didn't get baptized, but he went to paradise. He did not go on a mission trip, but he went to paradise. This sin, this sinner, this sinner, and whatever sin he had done, this sinner got to know Jesus. It says to us this morning that we need to get to know him. And we need to get to know him better every day. We need to come commune with him. We need to talk to him. We need to walk with him. We need to be a part of what we're going through on his side. If we're going to get to paradise, you're going to go through Jesus. If you're going to get to heaven, you're going to go through Jesus. If you're going to see God and be willing to look at God, if you're going to see God and be ready to see him, you got to confess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. This is an issue of salvation. You can't miss this one. This is, this is, a, this is a class that you have to take. You can't audit this class. You must be. You have to be. You got to be born again. And if you're going to be born again, you got to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Yeah. Yeah. 
Today you shall be with me. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. In paradise. This yes. is your salvation. Yes, God. Your salvation, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have a relationship with God, a relationship with Jesus? Mm -hmm. Do you have you come to realize that if you're going to leave here and leave hell and not go to hell, you need to get to know Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes. Thank you, Lord. That's why it's important when the doors of the church are open, when the door is open, no one moves. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. When the invitation is extended, no one starts talking. That's right. That's right. When someone is being, being, being encouraged to come to Jesus, wait till the, that point is over because any movement, any thing, anything that you could do or think about doing can distract somebody from coming to Jesus. This thief listens to the other thief clown and act a fool and you know where fools go, don't you? They go to hell. But this thief joined Jesus that day in paradise. He didn't have a suit on but he went to paradise. He didn't come off the cross and get baptized but he went to paradise. He didn't attend New Beginning Church but he went to paradise. He wasn't a part of the full gospel movement. He wasn't a part of the Jehovah's Witness movement. He wasn't a part of the Seventh-day Adventist movement. He wasn't a part of the Church of God in Christ. He wasn't a part of the non-denominational church. He was not a part of the Baptist church. He wasn't a part of the Methodist church. He just got to know Jesus. He says, when you get into your kingdom, whatever you do, don't forget about me. Please remember me. We need to understand that this is kingdom business. And in kingdom business, God is more concerned about your salvation and saving your soul than he is about any of his other stuff. Yes, yes. Yep. Hallelujah. It's, a, it's your salvation. It's a salvation issue. The next thing that I've recorded is found in John chapter 19. Verses 25 through 27. John chapter 19, verses 25 through 27. You will find Jesus on the cross. It all shows John and Jesus' mother, Mary. Jesus stopped dying long enough to make sure he had some life insurance for his mom. He, he stopped dying long enough. He stopped dying long enough to say, woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. What Jesus was doing when he looked down, he saw that John would be good for his mom. And he saw that his mama would be good for John. And the text declares that from that day forward, John took her home with him. I'm reminded of Rennie Haney, my best friend from childhood. We were born the same year on the same plantation. Mm -hmm. Just about three months apart, the same year, 1963. I know you were there. He was born. We were, he was born just a few days after me, a few months after me. And to this day, Rennie Haney still takes care of my mom. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Whenever the children want to know something, they call Rennie. Whenever, whenever uh, we want to know how she's going to react to this statement or how she's going to react to that statement, we call Rennie Haney. All right. All right. Rennie can, I, 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 I knew something was going on with Mama. I knew something wasn't really right with her. And guess what? I didn't call the doctor to tell the doctor. I didn't try to influence her to call the doctor. I called Rennie Haney. And when I called Rennie Haney, I said, Rennie, this is what I need you to do. I'm going to be in town for the funeral, and when I get there, I need you to make sure that Mama has an appointment. He called me right back, and when he called me right back, he said the appointment is Friday morning at 10 a.m. in the morning. And then I popped the question, are you going to tell her or I'm going to tell her? <laughs> Rennie had already told her before I got there. Then when we got there, here I am, I'm prepared to take her to the doctor. I'm prepared to walk in with her, and she's going to have the nerve, the audacity, the gall to ask me, is Rennie going? <laughs> Good Lord, my. 
It's because he takes your mama better than I can take care of her 600 miles away. He knows, he knows, he knows the doctor. And then when, when she shows up at the doctor and he's not in the room with her, the doctor walks in and the doctor's confused. He's looking around, where is it? Where is that? Where is that? I said, I'm here today. Yeah, but where is it? Really works for himself. He's a, he he does his own. He owns his own business, and he does not. He does not. He does not miss a time that Mama needs to go anywhere. He works for himself. And one one time, somebody said, "Hey, Randy, we're going down to the beach now." What person doesn't want to go to the beach? We're going down to the beach, and my dad was living during that time. He said, well, I need to see a Mr. Davis and Sister Davis that are going to have to go somewhere during that weekend because if they got to go somewhere where they're private, I can't show up at your side. It's a matter of family. It's an issue of family. It's a family issue. And a lot of us, a lot of people have instructed other people to watch out for my mama. Watch out for my daddy. Watch out for my family members. When they're hey, let me just tell you something. You may get around good right now, but one of these days, if you keep living, you're going to need somebody. So don't be so trifling and make everybody mad. Right. I don't know how you interpret trifling. That's a Mississippi term. Uh, no, <laughs> he says, woman, behold your son. This is the son that I'm leaving in your hands. The son, behold your mother. This is the mother I'm leaving in your hand. You are the one who designated the son now. Jesus thought enough of it to be an issue of family. Family is important. Dear mama said, Ready ain't called me today. Uh, you see me sitting here? <laughs> There seems to be a problem here. <laughs> well, you know, really used to call me right around, right before this time. He, he ain't called me all day. Then, then, then when he walks in, he just walks in the house. Mm. Then she had a nerve to say, this boy just walks in the house. I said, don't play me now. He does it all the time. Don't be tripping now. <laughs> it's because it's an issue of family. When it's an issue of family, you always, you always support family. And sometimes we have to tell children, your friends won't be there for you. But family will be there. You, 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 your, your associate will turn their back on you. Your co-workers will get, in a, get, get, get something done before they do it for themselves, before they do it for you. It's because of family that we hang out with them. That's why family needs to get along. You gotta get along. You gotta, you gotta make sure you get along because at the end of the day, you ought to be able to depend on family. All right. That's right. That's right. So it's an issue mm -hmm. of family. Yeah. The final part of this first part of Jesus saying from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is an issue of deep sorrow. It is a stressful issue. Here is Jesus hanging on the cross. He's already asked Jesus in the garden, already asked God in the garden, God, take this cup away from me. I don't want to go this route. There was the human side of him talking. You see, you see, God, God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is the second person of the Godhead. But even God has to talk to God. Even God, at this point, was separated from God. Jesus is so separated from God in that Jesus asked God the question, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, God can't be in the presence of sin. And Jesus is packing your sins and my sins. Your, your sins that everybody knows about. 
in your sins that are secret sins. I come to the conclusion there are some things I'm taking to my grave, brother Mal. There's just some things, sister, I am taking to my grave. And, I, and guess what? Some of you have told me in the midst of counseling some things, and guess what? You will never hear it again. And it will be ash to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth. I'm taking it to my grave. You can depend on that. You can depend on that. You can, I, I'm not talking about bunions on your toes. I'm, I'm not talking about a, a bad leg. I'm, I'm talking about sins that we've committed. Yeah. And I hope those who I've told will take it to their grave. All right, all right. Because guess what? This is the deal. Every friend has a friend. All right, all right. And I don't care if it's your best friend. Even your best friend has a best friend. Right, and every friend has a friend. And this is how it goes. Sister Glover, they say, look, girl, I'm going to tell you this, but don't you tell anybody. Right, and, then, and then they say, Brother Willow, well, let me tell you this. I'm going to tell you this because I know you won't tell anybody. <laughs> right. There are just some things that's between God and Matthew, Alexander, David. And there are some things going to stay between God and Matthew, Alexander, and David. So David's already told me, had I known you then, I wouldn't be with you now. There are just some things that, that's not even worthy of, of committing. But here is Jesus talking to God and telling God, God, I want to know this question. I want you to answer this question, God. I just need to know that. Let me tell you, the best person to talk to is God. Yeah, right, yeah, right. When you feel abandoned, talk to God. That's right. When you feel forsaken, talk to God. Yeah, that's right. Now, I'm a, very, I'm a very good advocate for those who need counseling. Some folk got seven folk wrapped up in them. You need to go get some counseling as you talk to God. Right, yeah. I don't think you got that. <laughs> I'm an advocate for counseling. And, and some counseling, your pastor can't have it. Some pastor, some counseling, I'm not equipped for. I am always willing, ready, and able to refer you to somebody that can handle your situation. I know, I know, there are some pastors that will say to you, "Bring it to me, I can fix it." Lay it on the table, and I can fix it. Well, you can't even fix the problem you have. People walk around here, going from one place to the other, talking to one person to the other, and they have not talked to God. Here Jesus is talking to God. Here God is talking to God. Here God is asking God some questions. God is asking God questions. If God asks God a question, don't you know that you ought to ask God a question? Some folks say you all got to question God. Well, if you don't question him, you never get the right answer. So God asks God some questions. And the question is, why have you forsaken me? First of all, God cannot, God the Father cannot reside in the presence of sin and Jesus is packing our stuff around. Jesus is packing. It is an issue of deep sorrow. Jesus says, take this cup away from me. Then automatically he says, Lord, not my will, your will be done. Now, Jesus had this great issue of sorrow. It is an indication that Jesus is human. I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know you are human. Don't let your children make you superman or superwoman. You are human. You got some issues going on that you can't deal with on your own. You are human. Jesus exemplified the fact that he is human. It is the fact that we, he is the one who has what is known as the hypostatic union. All right, all right. The hypostatic union is the fact that Jesus is just as much man as man. He's human. And he's just as much God as God. And there we have the hypostatic union. There is no other man, no other woman, no other person that would ever be called or be known or recognized as the hypostatic union. Mm -hmm. 
It is Jesus himself. Amen. He is God and man. Yes, you may be a man of God. You may be a woman of God. But you are not the God man. All right. mm -hmm. Jesus is the God man. Right. And we ought to worship him because he is the one who gets us to God. God, why have you forsaken me? When you look at when you look at the first phrase, Eli, Eli, Sabachthani. When you look at Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani. When you look at that phrase, Jesus is speaking in Aramaic, and as he speaks in Aramaic, it paints the picture of his humanity. And as he's speaking in Aramaic, he tells us, "Because you are human, you can come to me." Because your sins are plenty, you can come to me. Because you messed up like others have messed up, you can come to me. That's why right there on the cross, right there on Calvary, when Jesus died on Calvary, let me tell you, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom because Jesus rented it. God rented it. God tore it. And now we don't need a priest. Let me finish this statement before you run out of here and say, Pastor David said, we are giving it all the priests. <laughs> now we don't need the priests to go behind the veil to offer up our sins before God. You don't even need the preacher to go behind the veil to offer up your sins before God. Because the veil doesn't even exist anymore. It was torn from top to bottom and it was torn by God himself. <laughs> what would it look like if I walked in here with a robe on, with chimes around the bottom of it, with an e pod, and I walk in here and everywhere I go, you can hear me rap. Yeah. You can hear the bells chime. Because when the priest walked in behind the bell, it, you, you, they tied a rope around him and you could hear the chimes. Mm -hmm. And while he was in there talking to God, he had to keep moving so the people could hear the chimes. But every now and then a preacher, a priest, a pastor would go in there and when they get hit a child, they say, I don't hear him anymore. And they take a few minutes and say, I don't hear him either. He better start moving because if he doesn't move, they're going to drag him out, untie him, put the rope around somebody else and send him in there. Because when the man of God is not right before God, he would just drop dead in God's presence. I'm so glad I wasn't a priest doing that time. Because I would have dropped dead at the age of, of three months. Because we have to understand, God can't be in the presence of sin. So God separates him spiritually, himself spiritually from the physical Jesus himself. Jesus, so why have you forsaken me? God, why have you forsaken me? And let me just share with you this. Every now and then you ought to get to a point in your life where you just Deal with God and God alone in your extreme issues. How many of you got some extreme issues? How many of you got some issues that you just, you can't come tell the preacher about? How many of you got some issues that, that you can't really, really confess to any person? The Bible says confess your sins one to the other, but that was before Facebook and Twitter. I'm sorry. It says confess your sins one to the other. When we take it to God, God can fix it. You see, if I need a million dollars, I, I won't go to Sister Davis and ask for it. I'll go to Brother Miles because I know he has it. <laughs> and when he can let me have a million, that means he has several other millions. I'm, I'm going to ask for it to keep it. And because when you can when you can donate in a missionary uh, assignment uh, one or two million, that those people don't even laugh about it. They don't even cry about it. They don't even think about it. Because when there's one million, there are several other millions that where, where those came from. Yeah. When it comes to God, mm -hmm. God has given us favor. God has given us grace. And there's more favor for those came. That God doesn't run out of faith. God doesn't run out of grace. He keeps giving it to us. And sometimes he gives it to us when 
we don't even deserve. And he gives it to us sometimes we don't even ask him for it. We're too stubborn to pray sometimes. That's the next point here. We need to make sure that we talk to God on a regular basis. Just not when we need something. Amen. Tell God about it. Oh God, I, I was trying to move kind of fast the other day. I had to, oh Lord. <laughs> you may not be there yet. You, you may not have come across that yet. But every now and then, my body reminds me when I have not talked to God. Every now and then, my mind reminds me when I have not talked to God. I need him every day, every hour, every minute, every second. Because if God doesn't keep us, no one can keep us. We have to understand that people will misunderstand us. Look at the text. The text says, when he started calling on God, when he says, my God, my God, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, when he said, when he asked this question, God, how have you forsaken me? They, they concluded that he was calling on Eli. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you right now, folk can't help you. Mm -hmm. People, when you're in a bind, when you really, I mean, I mean, when you really needed help, all right, all right. folk could help you. Matter of fact, our dollars can't help us. Mm -hmm. Our jobs can't help us. Right. Our degrees can't help us. You need to call on God. And when he called on God, folk messed up his even, his even prayer. Let me tell you, folk would even mess up your intentions when you pray. Right, right. When you pray, people sit there, they need to be talking to God too, but they're listening to you. Talk to God to see if you stumble. They say, oh, he calling on, he calling on Elijah. Mm -hmm. And then the, the rest of them say, look, I'm going to hang around and see if Elijah will answer. I, I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm going to wait to see. That's my next point to you is, you need to understand when you're going through some things, folk are watching you to see how you come out on the other side. The good thing about going through, you're going through. You're not staying still. You're going through. That means you're going to come out on the other side. Whenever I went through the watch and tunnel on my way to work, I would go in on one side and come out on the other side. Thank God I was able to come out on the other side. When you're going through your trouble, when you're going through your heartache, when you're going through your sorrow, when you're going through your stresses, when you're going through your pain, thank God that God brought you out and now you're on the other side. That's a folk in this room can testify. If it had not been for God on my side, I could testify. With both hands, both feet, and ten toes, I could testify. Had it not been for God on my side, number one, I would have been dead and gone. Number two, I would have lost my mind. Number three, I deserve to be dead. But God's amazing grace came rushing, came running to me. It's a matter of deep sorrow. When God walks in, he takes away the pain. Sometimes, sometimes we get in so much pain and agony and sorrow. I'm talking about deep down. I'm not talking about physical pain. I'm talking about deep down stuff. I mean, stuff that, that the doctor can't fix. I'm talking about stuff that your lawyer can't fix. I'm talking about stuff that your church member can't fix. You need to take it to Jesus because he can fix it. And the songwriter just told us he covers us. And because he covers us, we need to stay with the one that covers us. That's right. That's right. Tell your children, tell your children, you know, your friends, you may party with them now, but there's going to come a day that they won't be there. All right. All right. You need to teach your children how to call on God without you. That's right. yeah. Teach your children how to rely on God without you. Teach your children how to depend on God without you. Because the day is coming. And guess what? Sister Carter is coming quickly. It's, it's moving like a bullet train. The day is coming where one of us will not going to open our eyes. And we won't be here as they know us. Tell my girls, now look, you wrong. Hallelujah. I just want to remind you, you are wrong. You make your own decisions. But make sure you make good quality spiritual decisions. All right, all right. Don't come tell me someone influenced you. Don't come tell me anything about peer pressure because you make your own decisions. Right. 
And when you make your own decisions, you need to make the decisions that are godly decisions that will be a blessing to you because you're honoring God. Jesus says, why have you forsaken me? First Timothy says, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, yield and yielded up his spirit. Jesus, he says, I thirst. In part two, he says, he says it is finished. In part two, and then finally he gives up the ghost. He surrenders his spirit. We need to understand that God is able to fix our issues. God is able to fix what you're going through. If God has to yield to God, how much more do we humans have to yield to God? Jesus yielded to the, the whims of the people. People still asking the question, did Judas go to heaven? People ask the question, did Judas really repent? Don't you know that Judas was a son of perdition? He was placed here for the sole purpose of messing up. Jesus is good thing. I want to tell you, some people place here, it seems like they place here just a measure of your day. I mean, they, they structure their whole lives about how can I mess their day up to that? You know anybody like that? They're just waiting and looking and, and viewing and, and they're upset and they, they, they're trifling and they're, they're moving and trying to mess up your day. They always got an agenda to mess up your agenda. That's why you call on God. You say like the psalmist, Lord, I think you've forgotten me. Lord, I called on you and you act like you hadn't heard me. And then the psalmist says to himself, he said, but Lord, I know you are holy. See, Jesus is quoting Psalm 22. He says, Lord, I know you are holy. Lord, I know you walk with those of my four parents. I, I know you walk with Israel. Now, Lord, I need you to walk with me. And the conclusion that the psalmist came to is I'm going to praise you anyhow. Are there any anyhow folk in the room? Will you praise him anyhow? In deep sorrow, will you praise him? Will you praise him anyhow? While you're going through, will you praise him? While things are looking good, will you praise him? The psalmist said, God, I'm going to praise you anyhow. Because you're holy, I'm unholy, and you are God. Amen. Final reason why we praise him is the reason why Jesus was on the cross. He hung between two things. The Bible says that it became darkness. From the sixth hour to the ninth hour. It became midnight. At midday. Because the Son of God was dying then. The earth took an epileptic fit. Began to reel in rock like a drunken man. Because the Son of God was dying that day. And there was one centurion soldier that said. Surely this must be. The Son of God. He recognized that God himself. Jesus was dying that day. They took him off the cross. Yeah. Laid him in a bottle of tomb. Yeah. It was a bottle of tomb because it didn't need it too long. Wow. It was a bottle of tomb because of oh, that Thursday morning. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus that died that day. He died on Friday. Rose that Sunday. Early that Sunday morning. Before Pilate could change the guard. He got up early that Sunday morning. Before the women could have known his body. He got up early that Sunday morning. Before they had a foot race to get to the tomb. He got up early that Sunday morning. He got up with all power. In heaven and earth. In his hand. Took his head rag off. Not a do rag. His head rag off. He, he took his napkin off. Hold it up right neatly. And laid it where his head used to lay. There was an indication that the same Jesus that got up from the dead, he's coming back again. He's coming back to get a church without a spot or a wrinkle. He's coming to get a forgiving church. He's coming to get a church that will find himself in paradise. He's coming to get a church that is concerned about the family. That same Jesus is coming back again. I'm on my way out of here. If I don't see you anymore, come on up to heaven. I'll 
If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gifts, you can do so by mailing to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503. Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you for money. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Father God, for every giver. We ask you to bless them and, to, and motivate them to continue to give. We pray that you bless every giver, Father God, that they will be blessings in the sight of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. What has this time to say? Father, first impressions from the rear to the front. Pray for the Lord's time, offering and sacrifice again. Praise Him. Praise Him. These words are not just not the same. Follow the first impressions of the men to the front. Bring forth the Lord's hands on the inside of this again.
Jacqueline Torres, Dorothy Sellers, Laborers for the Harvest, Protection in Schools, and World Peace. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Uh, we want to ask Sister Ann Paul to, to our prayer list, Sister Ann Paul. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you for those who have submitted their names and family members who have submitted. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father, to bless. We ask you, Father, to show yourself mighty on behalf of these. We ask you, Father God, to heal and touch. We ask you, Father God, to give relief. We ask you to encourage. We ask you, Lord, to bring up every bow down here. Lord, we thank you for healing those who have been trusting you. We thank you for encouraging us. And we thank you, Lord, for watching with us and watching over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank you. Let me thank those of you who have been praying for my mom, Brother David. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for, for uh, lifting her as well as the rest who are on our prayer list. Thank you for, for your prayers. Continue to pray. Uh, our fasting time is, is going to a year. I know you've been wanting to have some things that, that you, you should not be having during the season. It's only 21 days. But if you do something for 21 days, you ought to be able to keep it a habit, right? Amen. Amen. So continue to pray and fast for this next week. And then when you come next Sunday, we're going to have an eat out. How about that? We're going to eat some some stuff that you had maybe. How about that? For the last, if you last 21 days, we're going to, we're going to make sure we eat. Amen. And you get the chance to, to go to Sister Sister. Susan Henry House and eat some barbecue ribs. I think that's what she said. I think that's what she said. Yeah. That was up. She said barbecue ribs. I didn't say it was. Go down to the corner, guess, and take a right, take a left. Yeah, we're immediately out the church. We shall eat this. The hogs and cows died that we might live. So we will be able to. <laughs> We'll be able to, to eat some of the things and hopefully you have developed an ongoing taste for eating what's right. Amen. Amen. Our church outing will be uh, April the seventh, Friday, April the seventh. If you're not um, working or you're not doing a lot of important stuff, come on down to Word Texas and join us. And if you are going, you need to let me know today because they're gonna feed us and they need a count. If you are going. Uh, let me know if you're going to be there Friday, April 7th, so we can they can get a count of how much food, food they need. They need. Amen. The Expo at Johnson and Johnson. We need to make sure we support Johnson and Johnson as they so often supported us on April the 8th. Amen. Uh, birthdays, April birthday babies. Will you stand if you're born in the month of April? You're born in the month of April. The guy back there on the camera already standing. He's Guess what his birthday is? April 15th. April 15th. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he and I are going to celebrate. Celebrate those of you born in the month of March. Will you stand so we know who we are, are partnering with for, for eating? Okay, those of you who born in the month of March. Amen. So Brother Melo and I are going to get together with you all after church is open so we can decide what we're going to eat. Amen. Our birthday party is on April the 30th, so we're going to all get together to celebrate. Uh, the, the gentleman, the Bible gentleman, has finished uh, one quarter. We've completed one quarter. That's a fourth of the way for through the year. I want Sister Davis to come and, and talk to us about the youth who are journaling. The instructions are, number one, you, you listen to the Bible. You follow along as you listen, number one. And then, number two, you write down what God is saying to you. Because we bought books, didn't we? So you can journal those things. Okay. In our class, we have several people that are doing it. 
and we have one person that have completed the whole quarter. You already know who that person is. Who is that person? Oh yes, I've got mine. I have my book. You can see my book. But Sophia, let me tell you, Sophia has caught up and she has completed all of the, the first quarter. And we also have Daniel. Daniel stands up. Daniel is only one week behind. So we're encouraging the boys and girls to listen. Now, if you if you're not there, that doesn't mean that you don't have to do it. Just keep listening and you are bound to get there. So thank you all so much. Congratulations, Sophia, Daniel, and Sister Davis. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Let's take uh, the Bible listening and journaling very seriously because uh, God is doing great things through us and, and, and with us and God is trying to teach us some things that you won't imagine. When, as you listen, you will see some things that you missed for the last years that we have done listening and you missed all your life. So Bible journaling and Bible listening is very important. Call me if you don't know how to do it or you disconnect it so you can get back on the right page. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Sharing the gospel, good news on the go. Sharing the gospel, good news on the go. This is a book that uh, that I've authored, and it will be out, we hope, in the month of April. This is a the hardback, and this is a paperback. We want you to buy them, and we want you to give them away as gift. It's strictly evangelism. I'm the leader in this book, and I'm leading uh, 19 other people to write based on their expertise. Uh, it's taken from the book that I published in 2001 called Sharing the Gospel. This one is called Sharing the Gospel, Good News on the Go. Amen? Amen? And so this is what I'm going to ask the New Beginning Church to do. I'm going to order a whole bunch of books. Amen? And I'm going to trust that you're not leaving me out there. Amen? Say amen. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to trust that you're going to make sure that Pastor David doesn't spend a whole lot of money on the line and uh, he can't sell those books. Amen. So this is what I'm asking each person, male, female, boy, girl, girl, woman, man, boy, every person. I'm asking every person under the sound of my voice to purchase a book. Every person, not every household. I'm asking every person. If it's 10 people in your household, purchase 10 books. I'm asking every person to purchase a book. And then I'm asking every person to influence 10 other people to purchase a book. Amen? So you got a list, make 10 or more. 10 or more, you can go up to 100 if you want to. Uh, how many other people, many, many associates you have. I want you to purchase a book. Then I want you to influence others to purchase a book. Amen? With a limit of 10 people, go up more than 10 if you would. We want to make sure we get it in the hands of as many people as possible. It deals strictly with evangelism and discipleship. Amen? So uh, what we're going to do today, because I know y'all are not going to leave me hanging out there, uh, uh, what we're going to do today, Sister Irvin, Sister Trejo, and Sister Galvan will be out in the foyer, and they will be taking your pre-orders, your pre-orders. We're planning on having them out in the month of April. It'll be a real good birthday party for your pastor, real good birthday celebration for your pastor. If you would uh, sign up today, give them your money to the, give them your money today. Uh, the, the price of the softback is twenty five dollars. The price of the hardback is thirty five dollars. And if you purchase them through me, you get to save money on the price of the book. You get to save money on shipping, and you get to save money on the taxes. Amen. I'm going to see how many people are going to leave me hanging, and then I'm going to come to you and ask you why you leave me hanging. Senior citizens have to. Yeah, that's the price right there. That's the senior citizen price. That is a set. That's the senior citizen. Half a twenty-five. No, that's the, that's the price discount. Go on Amazon and see what the price is. Amazon. Amen. Hallelujah. So senior citizen. That is. That's a good idea. That's the senior citizen price. The young adult price. The children price. I just got it for everybody. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for for uh, participating. Amen. Thank you so much. Looking forward to it. I'm glad you told me what that price was. That's the senior citizen price. Amen. Let's turn our hearts toward communion. Let's turn our hearts toward what Jesus has done for us on Calvary.
Father God, we thank you now. We honor you, Father. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the privilege to approach the table to remember what you've already done. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus and how he has paved the way for us. Thank you for this bread. Thank you for this drink. We ask you, Father God, to bless us to approach your, your bread and your drink with a sincere heart. We pray, Father God, that you bless us, that we would not drink damnation and eat damnation to our souls. Now, Lord, we come praying, Father God, that you bless this food and bless this drink. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to unction us to not hold grudges. Unction us, Father God, to forgive and bless us that we will walk with you. So in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and thank God.
broken in your life. This represents my blood. Drink your blood. Yeah.